God's blessings, dear friends. We, the group of CMC, Christian Media Center, bring you live the celebration of St. Francis of Assisi from Holy Land, Jerusalem. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, may the Lord give you peace. I am Brother Abhishek, a Franciscan, who will be translating Holy Eucharist in English. On this day of 4th October, the whole world celebrates the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, popularly known as the Second Christ. We, the Friars Minor from Jerusalem, Holy Land, invite you all to join us for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is celebrated in the Church of St. Saviour by Rev. Fra John Jacquis, a Dominican priest, along with clergy or priests, nuns and faithful. Francis of Assisi lived about 800 years ago. He was born in the city of Assisi, Italy, in the year 1182. He was famous for his love for all creation. He called for simplicity of life, poverty and humility before God. He worked to care for the poor. Thousands were drawn to his sincerity, piety and joy. In, in all his actions, Francis sought to follow fully and literally the way of life demonstrated by Christ in the Gospels. His deep love for God overflowed into love for all God's creatures in his prayers of thanksgiving for creation. His sermons preached to the animals and his insistence that all creatures are brothers and sisters under God. In the year 1224, Francis became the first saint in history to receive the stigmata, the wounds of Christ crucified. On October 4, 1226, Francis died in the town of Assisi at the age of 44 and was quickly canonized by Gregory IX. Today, over the 3 million people a year, year make a pilgrimage to the tomb of St. Francis of Assisi, revealing him to be one of the most popular and beloved saints of all time. Dear brothers and sisters, as we are preparing ourselves to participate in a worthy manner, the Eucharist, let us bring our intentions to the Lord, our family members, our problems, our difficulties, our pains, our sorrows, and all our near and dear ones that we need our prayer. Let us pray for the whole world, for the peace in the world, especially in Ukraine, and for all the politicians, for the change of mind, to bring peace and security in this whole world. May everyone, each of us, think for the common good of each and every one. Let's be united through this Holy Eucharist.
O oh Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. As St. Francis of Assisi always prayed this prayer, let's also be part of him and invoke the Lord and follow these words in our life. May the Lord give us peace as we enter into the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Fratres, agnoscamus peccata nostra, ut aptissimus at sacra misteria celebranda. Confiteor, Deo. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax hominibus, ore voluntatis. Amen. Amen. 
let us pray. Father, you helped our Sarapic Father Francis reflect the image of Christ through a life of poverty and humility. May we follow your Son by walking in the footsteps of Francis of Assisi and by imitating his joyful love. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. First reading, a reading from the book of Sirach. Behold him, in whose time the house of God was renovated. Lord, you have given me a portion of my heritage. Save me, O God, for I have put my trust in you. Plenitudinem letitiae cum vultu tuo, delectationes in dextera tua, usque in fine. Lord, you have given me a portion of my heritage. Save me, O God, for I have put my trust in you.
Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers, may I never boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through it, the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It means nothing whether one is circumcised or not. All that matters is that one is created anew. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life and on Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the brand marks of Jesus in my body. Brothers, may the favor of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Now we have sequence, hymn to St. Francis of Assisi. Lo, new signs of sanctity, deserving praise in high degree, wonderful and fair to see, in Francis now behold. To the newly gathered band, Francis gives the king's command, and guided by his mighty hand, the new law does unfold. Before the world's astonished view, arise the life and order new, whose holy rules again renew the evangelical state. Francis to Christ's law conforms, the life monastic he reforms, and all the apostolic norms he keeps invalidated. Scan the measure of his food, scan his remnant, Coarse and rude, accord his griddle plan and rude. He goes with feet unshod. For naught but poverty he earns, from money he is in loathing turns. All earthly things now Francis spawns despising all for God. He seeks a place to weep apart and moans in bitterness of heart the time he lost while taking part in earthly things to the vain. Within a mountain carven saloon, he hides to weep and laying frown, prays aloud with sighs and groans, then peace returns again. There in that rocky cave's retreat, entrapped in contemplation sweet, the wise judge spawns the earth beneath, to heaven he aspires. His flesh by penance is subdued, transfigured wholly and renewed. The scriptures are his daily food, he scrawns all base desires. Then, like a seraph from the height of heaven, comes the king of might. The patriarch, in deep of light, beholds the vision dread.
it bears the marks of Christ and lo, while Francis stands in speechless awe, it pierces him and blood does flow from out the wounds so red. His body, like Christ crucified, is signed on hands and feet. His side, pierced through and through, is slowly dried in crimson streams of blood. Prophetic secrets now are heard, great wisdom as the Lord conferred upon the saint. The mystic word, his soul with light does flood. Now in those bleeding wounds, behold, black nails appear, causing pain untold. Sharp are the points and manifold, the anguish and the awe. No human instrument did aught to make those wounds they were not brought to him by nature's hand nor wrought by cruel hammer blow. We pray you by the cross sign marked on your flesh whereby thaws yours, the world, the flesh, all things malign, to conquer gloriously. O Francis, take us to your care, protect us here from every snare, that we your great reward may share in heaven eternally. Holy Francis, Father sweet, devoutly we your aid entreat. May we and all your children meet, crowned victorious in the strife. In virtue's path our footsteps train, and guide us where the saints now reign, that we, your children, may attain the joys of endless life. Amen.
Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let's A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, Jesus spoke thus, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, to you I offer praise for what you have hidden from the learned and the cleverly you have revealed to the merest children. Father, it is true, you have graciously willed it so. Everything has been given over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son but the Father, and no one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. Come to me, all you are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Chiamiamo anche noi nostro padre San Francesco. Brothers and sisters, it is always a great joy for us Dominican friars to come to celebrate with the Franciscan brothers, the one we also call our father San Francis. Our two orders were born at the same time, during the same evangelical awakening that each sought to live out with its own charism. But the fraternity that unites us has crossed the centuries. Sometimes, as here in Jerusalem, we also have the opportunity to share the same mission, in this case, that Bible study. As director of the Eclical Biblicum, I would like to recall the beautiful fraternal collaboration that unites us with the Studium Biblicum Franciscanum and the Franciscan Friars who keeps it alive. A few months ago, the sudden death of our dear brother, Frederick, was felt by each of us as a loss in our family and the example of his life as a model for each of us. The first reading, taken from the book of Sirach, speaks of the high priest Simon, son of Onias, who during his lifetime repair the temple and strengthen the sanctuary. How can we not think of Pope Innocent III's dream of Francis holding up the collapsing walls of his Latin cathedral? Legend or not, it is undeniable that the church of his time was flattering. Heresies were wakening, considerable confusion, especially the Catherines. Peter's boat is being hit so hard by heretics that his 
that it is almost sinking, wrote the Archbishop of Narbonne in 1173, at the end of 12th century. The papal missions charged with eradicating the heresy were unsuccessful, not so much because of lack of good doctrine, but because their lavish lifestyle scandalized the people, who, on the contrary, were edified by the very bare life of heretics. In fact, the whole of society was changing profoundly. Monastics were losing their aura. The feudal world was crumbling, and the cultural center of gravity was shifting from the countryside to the city. Bologna, Paris, and Oxford saw the birth of the first universities. With all that this meant in terms of youth, enthusiasm, and the development of new ideas, the whole society was in turmoil. Was the Catholic Church was going to be there? L'intera società era in subbuglio. La Chiesa sarebbe stata presente. It was in this context that Francis and Dominic had the intuition of their vocation. For them, this crisis, instead of being a threat, was a wonderful opportunity for evangelical rebirth. Francis had an immediate and very vivid perception of it while praying in the church of San Damiano. He heard Christ saying to him, Go and rebuild my church, which is falling into ruin. He understood immediately that it was not a matter of greater organization, nor would a charge in theology or canon law change things. It was a matter of returning to an evangelical life, and the first rule he imagined was very clear, conform to the life of Christ. A poorer, more stripped-down life of which some heretics of the time were an example, living very poorly, renouncing marriage, the very called perfect among the Catherines. According to the chronicle, Matthew Paris, at the first Francis was not well received by the Pope to whom he turned present this first rule. It must be said that the reformers were swarming. The wilderness and Lambodis humiliated. And one can understand the Pope's distress of Pope Francis' invitation. For Francis, as for Dominic, it would take time and tendency to convince the Pope that new style of mission was needed. The heart of the missionary reform, the purpose as a name, evangelical life. But may I never boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, says St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, which we reread this morning. For Francis, everything starts from the contemplation of this crucified Christ of San Domeano. His contemplation is not morbid. What moves him is the love that this crucified Christ shows. The Church has well understood this by instituting the annual feast of the exaltation of the cross, a very ancient celebration that has its roots in a celebration of the dedication of the Constitution Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre on September 14, 335. For us Christians, the cross is a sign of love, the proof of life given out of love. Early Christians, as we know, were uncomfortable with this image of the cross, which remained for them an infamous sign, a gallows. Only gradually did the sign of the cross become not only a sign of belonging to Christ, but the symbol of a mysterious of love. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Christ, 
non c'è amore più grande che dare la vita per coloro che si amano. Brother Francis and Brother Dominic therefore proposed to their first brothers to lead first of all an evangelical life, fraternal life, because it is the first place where one can live charity and learn forgiveness, apostolic life, sending them on mission roads and establishing their monasteries at the gate of cities, where they could perceive the new challenges of their time. Life of prayer in the daily frequentation of the Holy Scriptures and in shared prayers, simple and sometimes poor life. The two foundations had to fight hard so that their brothers would not get too comfortable a life that was also joyful, of, of the kind of joy one feels within when one has stripped oneself of the superfluous and gives one's life for what is worth. The celebration of our Father St. Francis invites us to ask ourselves some questions. What are the challenges of our time that requires an evangelical response from us? Pope Francis helps us answer this question. For example, by emphasizing the tragedy of migrants or the victims of war. The gospel obliges us to always ask ourselves whether our communities are truly in tune with our times, ready to respond to new challenges. Each of us must also ask how we are inhabited and nourished by, by the loving grace of the crucified Christ that overwhelmed Francis. There is one sign that does not deceive, joy. The joy of which Francis and Dominic have given us an example is the unmistakable sign that one has put one's life in the, la in the right place. Following Christ, Happy feast, dear brothers and sisters. Now let us pray the I believe in God.
om nexung convenimus fratres carissimi ad redemptionis nostre recolando misteria rogemus ergo deum omnipotentem ut mundus universus istotius benedictionis et vitae fontibus i regetur. Now let us pray the prayer of the faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the children and followers of St. Francis, to see in him the living image, the praying Christ, and to complete in their lives the model of the evangelical life that he followed. To the Lord we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are a protector, guardian, and defender. Defend our communities and countries from all evil and keep them in all peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your poor and humble servant, St. Francis of Assisi, you have offered us a living image of your Son. Grant that through his powerful intercession, we too might fulfill our baptism and vocation as authentic witnesses of your gospel in the faithful service of your church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Francis gave everything joyfully to have no other treasure than you. Grant all the baptized to place their trust and hope in you, so that we can truly call you our Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For us, the followers of Christ, in the style of St. Francis of Assisi, so that day by day we may be salt of the earth and light of in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator of the universe, your son wanted to work as a carpenter in the house of Nazareth. Bless those who earn their bread with the sweat of their own brown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are our guardian and protector. Defend our country from all evil and keep it in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our hope, our faith and love. Teach us to see and love your Christ hidden in the faces of all the needy today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in your poor and needy servant, St. Francis of Assisi, you presented us with a living model of your Son. Please assure us that thanks to Him, we will be able to fulfill the full purpose of our baptism as faithful and witnesses to your gospel dedicated service of your Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ti preghiamo, Signore, in questo giorno di festa per il nostro custode, Padre Francesco Pattò. Today let us pray especially for our custos of our Jerusalem. As he celebrates the feast day and his birthday, let us pray for his good health of mind and body. May God protect him from all dangers and may he give him peace of mind in his service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray to the Lord. 
At si domine quesumus, iniziatio ut popul supplicanti, ut quote inspirante fidelitea expetit, tu acereri largitate percipia, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Now, as we enter into the liturgy of the Eucharist, let us surround ourselves and pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you can satisfy our every desire and need. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our thanks and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. May we be filled with all the fullness of God. We offer our family, friends, relatives, our neighbors, and near and dear ones to your care, Lord. Protect and strengthen them under your banner of love.
pray brothers and sisters that my my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church Lord, as we bring you our gifts, prepare us to celebrate the mystery of the cross, to which our Father Francis adhered with such burning love. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Domine Sancte Pater Omnipotens, Eterne Deus, qui famulum tuum Franciscum per altissime paupertatis et humilitatis semitas gradientes, evangelice perfectionis, celsitudinis sublimasti, quem et seraficis incensum ardoribus incuctis operis manum tuarum ineffabiliter exultare fecisti, ad sacris stigmatibus insignitintum, nobis imaginem exibuisti. Jesu crucifici Domini nostri, per quem maestatim tuam laudant angeli, adoron dominationes, tremun potestates, celi cerorumque virtutes, ac beata serafim socia exultatione concerebran, cum quibus et nostra voces ut admiti iubeas deprecamur supplici confessionis dicentes. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Sanctus es Domine, et merito te laudat omnis a te condita creatura, qui a per filium tuum Domino sum Christum, Spiritus Sancti operante virtute, vivificas et santificas universa, et populum tibi congregare nos designis, ut a solis ortus qui ad ocasum oblatio munda offeratur nomini tuo. Supices ergo te Domine, de precamu, Ut que munera, que tibi sacranda de tulimus, eorem spiritus sanctificare dinieris, ut corpus et sanguis fiant, filii tui, Domini nostri Iesu Christi, cuius mandato et misteria celebramus. 
ipse enim in que nocte tradebatur, accepit panem, et tibe gratias argens, benedictit fregit dedique discipulis tui dicens, accipite et manducate ex hoc omnes, hoc est enim corpus meum quo provobis tradetur. Similimodo posquam cenatum est, accipiens calicem et tibi gratias agens benedictit dedique discipulis suis dicens, accipite et bibite ex eo omnes. Ic est enim calic sanguinis mei, novi et eterni testamenti, qui provobis et promultis e fundetur in remissionem peccatorum, hoc facite in meam commemorationem. Mysterium fideli. Sigitur Domine, et Deus dem Filii Tui saluti fere persionis, nec non mirabilis resurrectionis et ascensionis in celum, sed et pestelontes alterum eius adventum, oferimus tibi, gratias referentes, hoc sacrificium vivum et sanctum. Respice quesumus, in oblationem ecclesiae Tue, et ac nocens ostiam, coluisti molationem. Concede ut que corpore sanguine filii recefimur, sicque ius sancto repleti, unum corpus e unum spiritus inveniamur in Christo. Ipse nos, ipse nos tibi perficiat munus eternum, ut cum electis tuis ereditatem consequi valeamus, in primis cum beatissima Virgine Dei Genitrice e Maria, cum beato Iosef eius sponsor, cum beatis apostolis tuis et gloriosis martiribus, cum sancto patre nostro Francisco, sancto patre Dominico, et omnibus sanctis quorum intercessione perpetuo apud te confidimus adiuvari. Ecclesia nostra reconciliazione spropiciat quesimus Domine, ad titius mondi facium atque salutem, ecclesiam tuam peregrinantium in terra, in fide et caritate per mare dinieris, con famulo tuo, Papa nostro Francisco, et episcopo et patriarca nostro Pier Papista, com episcopale ordine et universo clero, et omni popolo acquisiones tue, votisius familie, quam tibia assargo luisti, attesto propitius. Omnis filios tuos, e puque dispersus tipi, clemes pater miseratos coniunge. Fratres nostros defunctos, et omnis qui tipi placentes, ex hoc secula transiorem, e renium tuum pininius admite, opi fores piramos, ut simul gloria tua periniter satiemur. Per Christum Dominum nostrum, per cum monda bona concta largeris. Per ipsum, et con ipso, et in sipso, est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis odor et gloria, per omnia secula secula. At the Xavier's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Audemus.
Let's all together pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Domine Iesu Christe, qui dixti apostolis tuis, pacem rinquo vobis, pacem me amdo vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tue, e amque secundum voluntatem tuam pacificare e coordunare dignieris, qui vivis ed regnas in secula seculorum. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, dear brothers and sisters. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray during this time of communion that the Father may help us and may we realize the worth of the communion that is given through our Father. 
everlasting Father, your word states that as often as we eat this bread and drink the cup, we proclaim your death until you come. We thank you for, the, for offering us this hope even in your death. Thank you for this communion, which is a symbol of the realization of a spiritual union between you and us. Thank you for not only washing away our sins on the cross, but for welcoming us into a bond with you. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We adore you, O Lord Jesus Christ, in this church and all the churches of the world. And we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Amen. Amen. 
Most high, glorious God, enlighten the darkness of our minds. Give us a right faith, a firm hope, and a perfect charity, so that we may always and in all things act according to your holy will. Let us pray. Domine per es sancte que sum simus ut beati patris Francisci caritatem zelum apostolicum imitantes tue dirixionis effectur percipiamus et in salute omnium e fundamus per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, uh, may the Lord give you peace. And uh, thank you all for coming to celebrate with us the feast of our Seraphic Father, St. Francis uh, of Assisi. I want first uh, of all to thank uh, the Dominican Fathers for continuing this beautiful tradition that links our two orders. Thanks to the prior of the Dominicans, Father Martin Stasiak, and to, the, and to Father Jean-Jacques Perrin, Rector de l'Ecole Biblique, for presiding our Eucharist and also for the meaningful and enlightening words uh, he offered us uh, in his homily. I want also to thank in a special way for their presence uh, the, Patria, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, His Beatitude, uh, Pier Battista Pizzaballa, their Excellencies, uh, Monsignor Giacinto Bulos Marcuzzo and Monsignor uh, Yasser Ayash, Monsignor Thomas Grigia and Monsignor uh, Natale Albino, Chargé d'Affaires of uh, the Holy See. Welcome to Father Piotr Zelasco, Patriarchal Vicar for the Hebrew-speaking Catholics, and Father Nicodemus Schnabel, Patriarchal Vicar for the Migrants, the Abbot of the Dormicio, Abbey of the Dormicio Abbey, uh, Father Bernard Maria Alter, the Prior of the Abu Ghosh Abbey, Father Louis Marie Coudre, and also their Excellencies, uh, the General Consul of Italy, Mr. Giuseppe Fedele, the General Consul of Belgium, Wilfried Pfeffer, uh, Mr. Wilfried Pfeffer, the General Consul of Spain, Mr. Alfonso Lucini, and uh, the Deputy Consul of France, Mr. Quentin Lupinot, and also Ms. Diane Corner, Consul General of United Kingdom, Evangelos Vlioras, Consul General of Greece, and all the consular representatives here present. The civil authorities, Mr. Cesar Margier, Major Alaharb, and Mr. Saliba Saliba, all the superiors of the religious institutions, the religious men and women, the volunteers of the Holy Land, and all of you, brothers and sisters, who came to honor with us our seraphic father, St. Francis of Assisi. I've tried to remember everyone, but uh, since we are blessed by the presence of many guests uh, that are very dear to us, I apologize if I for sure forgot someone. After the celebration, you are all invited to share with us uh, some refreshments uh, in the hall of the Curia. Once again, happy Feast of St. Francis uh, to everyone. Dominus Fobiscum. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Deus Gloria et Exultatio Sanctorum, benedicat vos benedictione perpetua, qui vobis odia natribuire solemnia. Amen. Eorum intercessione a presentibus malis liberati, et exemplis sancte conversationis intrusti, in servizio dei fratrum quae in veniamini semper intenti. Amen. Quat in omnibus valeatis ilius patrie vos gaudia possidire, in qua filios suo supernis coniugi civibus, in pace perpetua sancta letatur ecclesia. Et benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris et Fili, et Spiritis Sancti, descendat super vos et maneat semper. Amen.
Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May He show His face to us and have mercy. May He turn His countenance to us and give us peace. The Lord bless us. Wish you all a happy feast of our fathers and friends of Assisi. This is Brother Abhishek signing off with gratitude for joining us for the celebration. I wish you all a blessed day. Peace and perseverance, dear brothers and sisters. Stay blessed. Thank you one and all.